you know, maybe affecting a uh, person's health and maybe in, even in society and so on. So today I wanted to talk about a couple of things. And first of all, if you notice that uh, it's getting dark earlier. You know, when it gets dark earlier, I mean, for years now, you, you know as a little kid that, that Christmas is coming soon, right? When it's starting to get dark earlier. And um, the next thing as you get to adult is that you know that the year is going to end soon because, you know, it's getting darker and, and the, the, the days are going by and it's going to be December and pretty soon it's a new year again. So you, you must have taken note of that. And then this is October and it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Okay, um, I don't know. I have my views on this, uh, this, this these individual um, type of awareness activities and so on. But uh, however, I, I feel it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. But I think it should be renamed Cancer Awareness Month, even though cancer awareness should be every month, every day, in every you know all the time, you know, because cancer doesn't have a time when it. Uh, it strikes anyone. Cancer strikes whenever the cells get active and they decide to create havoc in your bodies. What is happening now is that more and more persons are becoming afflicted with cancer. And even though we have Breast Cancer Awareness Month for years and we've had all this research and whatever else has happened, I'm finding uh, very little information from the, from the outside world that tells me what causes um, these cancers. You know, I, I think that, that, that we need to spend more time understanding what happens to our bodies that causes it to get into that phase. You know, cancer is not just um, a standalone disease. It's a, it's a disease that, that comes with baggage. You know, it comes with other things. It comes as a result of things that you would have done or things that would have you would have been exposed to or things that would have happened to you you know so many people are, are stricken with cancer today you know when are we going to have prostate cancer awareness month you know breast cancer awareness month could be male or female i want you to know that because men also can get breast cancer they may not call it that but it is you know so you guys who uh who have those you know chest muscles that are no longer muscles but they're breasts now because you've consumed you've consumed foods that are highly loaded with hormones you know female hormones uh, example you know the one you like the most be it barbecue or fried or whatever it is chicken <laughs> I don't play with on that um, you get a lot of chemical hormones there and uh, I mean you're probably wondering how come well, I mean, they grow in six weeks. You have from a little baby chick to a big chicken, you know. How is it that they can happen so quickly? Well, you need to try and understand that and study it. Go online and check it and maybe do some research. But you've got to feed it something to make it grow so fast. And you must remember that when those chemicals that are used are consumed by persons, it doesn't mean it ends there. It continues to work inside of you unless you you know, dispose of it, um, doing your detoxification, etc., and so on, right? So Cancer Awareness Month, as I would call it, means that everyone should be concerned, not just this month about cancer awareness, but every day of your life, you should try to, to you know, think in the back of your mind that cancer can strike anyone. You know, it has no favorite person anymore, no favorite time or no, um, no particular type either. You know, so we have lots of men having prostate cancer, a lot of women having uterine cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer. We have a lot of stomach cancer. You know, there's colon cancer, there's rectal cancer. You know, I mean, every organ can, have, can become cancerous. There's lung cancer, esophageal cancer, you know, thyroid, I mean everything, even, even um, your pancreas, your liver, you know. So cancer is not just localized. And my, my take on cancer is that when, when cancer is on any part of the body, I don't care where it is, if it's your prostate or your breast or your colon, 
it means that it's in your blood. It's in your body. Okay? Those cells are active and they're in your body. They just may have been uh, more dominant in an area. But it's the same blood system you have, it's the same organs, the same um, you know, transfer system that, that the blood flows through the body. It, it, it doesn't filter and, and, and you know, strain someplace and come back in. Those cells travel, you know, it's the same um, body system you have. So cancer in one area doesn't mean that it's only local to there. You know, it may, it may be focused there, but very seldom is it just there alone because the cells are not, they're not, um, they don't have an eye on them where they say, okay, we're gonna just be here, you know. So we need to be very concerned about cancer in its whole, not just um, any particular organ, but cancer in the body. What is it that we're doing that's causing us to have more cancers in our society? You know, we're consuming more chemical foods, chemically laden foods. We're planting with more chemicals. We are, we are using more chemicals on our life products, you know, livestock products. You know, we use more chemicals on our plants, on our vegetables. You know, we're forcing them to get ripe by using more chemicals. We are, we're doing all sorts of things with more chemicals. And chemicals are not organic, you know, they are inorganic. And if you use inorganic chemicals in an, in an organic body, then you're going to have problems. You know, right away you're going to have problems. You're either going to have to um, get rid of it, or you're going to have to deal with what happens as a result of you having it. You know, so all of us need to be concerned with cancer. And even though it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, I think that we need to be concerned and think that this is Cancer Awareness Month. Because not only will women have breast cancer this month, men will have prostate cancer, and, 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 and you know, humans will have all kinds of cancers. <laughs> we need to, I think we need to look at, that, you know, look at, at, at this whole thing and be more realistic. And maybe rephrase it and say Cancer Awareness Month, not just Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Right? Um, I wanted to touch on something that is very, uh, very sickening, very disgusting. It's a crime again in our nation. Um, we've had so many murders recently, you know, people in their 80s, people who should be just enjoying their lives until, until the time comes when they can go peacefully are being murdered. Have we, ever, have we ever tried to understand what is the root cause of these crimes? Have we, have we, have we ever had maybe some forum where we can look at what, you know, you get sensible people, you get some, some we have quite a few people here who are, int who are intelligent, who are, who are psychologists and psychiatrists and, and who understands what happens to the body's mental state, can come together, a few, a few of the people, and talk about the realities of our country. You know, why is it that we have this high rate of crime? where people are being murdered and robbed and, and, and just destroyed, just, just like that. What is it that is wrong in our society? And I've been doing some thinking, you know, and it, it, it was really sad when I, when I learned that, that the, el the, the two elderly people who were murdered, then last week we, I, I, I spent some time talking about the, 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 the men who came here for the function, you know, and one was killed and, and, and I don't know, the other one survived but they, they were all attacked and one was killed, you know? I don't care if it was organized crime or if it was spontaneous crime. It's crime and it's, ter it's disgusting and it's bad for a country. What is it really that we can say contributes to this type of crime? Have we ever sat down and wondered with a brainstorm? You know, what is it? Well. I have some theories, and this, these are my theories, okay? Number one, I think that, that, that we, from the time of conception, from the time of conception, the things that we do to, as men, to women, you know, some of us men, we, we beat the women, we harass them mentally, we frustrate them, we stress them out, we, in, in, and this is the womb, this is the fetus in the womb of the woman who, who, who has to, 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 to carry this fetus for nine months. 
and we we men sometimes even some women fail to understand that that what you do to that pregnant mother or pregnant woman it's not just affecting the woman it's affecting the fetus you know even from that stage in the in the womb what you do to the woman affects the fetus when you speak to them a certain way it affects the fetus when you when you brutalize them a certain way it affects the fetus you know you're carving the fetus from your actions guys you know so i blame men sometimes for what happens in the criminal world fathers or 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 men who would have impregnated the woman and is is now ill treating her i blame you for some of that you know and as the fetus comes out of the womb and becomes a human that is born and into society you know we are exposed to to all sorts of of elements and 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 on other persons who who for some strange reason don't appreciate another human you know so you you you're cursing around the infant you're you're beating your mother or your father around the infant and the infant is seeing that that that, that, that infant is see, witnessing that you know you're screaming and hollering and shouting and cussing in the house and that infant hears that you know and then as a child grows up and gets out in the world out there you go to school and 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 you're exposed to other children who are behaving in manners which is not childlike and you're exposed to that and then the teacher you know sometimes behaves a certain way in the classroom and you're exposed to that and then as you as you travel in the mini buses and the, and the taxis the people who drive those vehicles they, they they play music or noise that that is that is abusive and disgusting and you're exposed to that you know and then you 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 you, you go to church and the pastors don't address those things you know they, they 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 talk about the bible and about god and jesus christ and they and that's nothing wrong with that but but then you forget what happens in the real world and you don't address those situations that faces people that comes and sit in the pews so i blame you too for some of that you know and then as you as you come out of church you get back in the minibuses or you get into the cars and you turn your radio on or you put in a cd and you're playing the nonsense and you you're feeding your mental state with with garbage that programs you to become what you become in the end. And we wonder, why is it that we have murderers and thieves and criminals that exist in society? It's not just because of joblessness. It's because of the root, the root, the foundation that was laid, that was not properly laid as they come up. And as, they, as the children come up in society, there are not enough persons there to guide them down the path away from criminality. You know, I, I think that we need, to, we need to really spend some time in the churches, in the schools, in the homes, you know, in, in, in the offices. You know, I remember in, in offices where I would go into offices and they say, well, well, you know, we're having devotion. We took prayer out of schools and, and, and we wonder why we're having crime. You know, we don't, we don't do that anymore. Those used to be guidelines that children can follow on you. Maybe if you're thinking the wrong way, you can be steered back to the right way, you know. Have we ever sat down and, and, and thought of what it is that may have been contributing to the lawlessness and the, and the criminality and, the, and the, the murderers and everything that's happening in our society? I don't know if we ever sit down and think about that in, in, in the positions that we're in to try to, to, to understand what we need to do, how we need to, what role we need to play to change what is happening with that. You know, we are rearing and bringing up criminals from the womb and we don't realize it. We are rearing and we bringing up hypertensive and cancerous patients because we smoke with, with, inf with, with fetus in the womb. We, we, we may not be smoking a cigarette, but we're consuming smoke from barbecue chicken and barbecue fish and barbecue this. And you're loading your body with toxic material that will cause you to become a cancer victim and you're wondering why you have cancer. You know? You're exposed to all sorts of chemicals like mercury and lead and, and mycotoxins that, that, that you're exposed to on a daily basis from all sorts of act avenues. Like you spring mosquitoes and you spring for bugs and you, you sit around and you're breathing all that toxicity into your system and you're wondering why you may have lung cancer, why you may have liver cancer. You know, because you're breathing chemicals that are destroying your system inside. 
cancer is not just a disease that, that is standalone by itself. We have cancer in our society from the womb. That is the reason why we have criminals and we have murderers and we have thieves. Because we're programming them from the womb. And you can't talk to kids anymore because they want to tell you where you come from and, 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 and what color you are and all sorts of things. You know, so we need to get back to basics. To change what is happening in our lives, be it cancer or be it crime. We have to get back to basics and get to the fundamental reasons as to why these things are happening. And don't wait till it happens to try to find the solution because when it happens, it's too late. It's already too late. Some of you may be fortunate enough to be able to, 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 to reverse the cancer if it's at a certain stage, if it doesn't get too far. You know, like I said last week, we should have laboratories here where we have, we have, we have physicians and we have scientists coming up in our society, in our classrooms, in our schools, where they can, they can get in the labs and try to figure out what it is that we can use, what is it that we can do to change what's happening in our society with cancer, with hypertension, diabetes, and all the other things, STDs, rampant in our society today. Many persons don't even know they have it. There are no symptoms anymore. You hardly see them. The body becomes immune to the stuff that happens. So you have it and you're transmitting it. They don't realize it. Don't realize it. So when you want to talk about society and what's happening in our society and the cancer that we have in our society, let's look back at all the other situations that we have. Hypertension, diabetes, you know, all the viruses and bacteria that we have, streptococcus, you know, adenovirus. Many of you carry your nails long. And you can't even wipe your backsides properly because you can't wash your hand because you can't get down under the nail because it's so long to get the fecal matter that you put in there when you wiped. And then you use the same hand to eat your food and you wonder, how is it that you're transmitting adenovirus into your system, fecal matter into your bodies? You wonder how you're doing it. That's because you fashion, you're so fashion crazy that your, lay, your nails are so long, you can't wipe yourself properly, you can't take, it, take care of yourself properly, and you're transmitting the, system, the garbage into your system and you're wondering, how is it that I can get these things? Many of you who are using, using your, your, your homes to prepare foods. You know, you preparing the food in your, your, your apparel, your night, your night gown or your pajamas. And you're not even sanitizing properly, you know. You should do, as if, do it as if you're doing it in, a, in, 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 in an open space. You shower, you clean yourself. You prepare as if you're preparing to... to to sell something to somebody when you're preparing it. Clean yourself properly before you put your hands in something that you're going to pass on to others. You're wondering why we're a sick society? We're a sick society because we are people who are thinking about what we do before we pre pre prepare things to pass on to people in society. We're a sick society because we do sick things. We do the things that get people sick. You know, so we need to go back to basics, my friends. We need to go back and try to understand. This is Cancer Awareness Month, of course. Yes, it is. All right. Instead of us just thinking, okay, let's, what do we do for Breast Cancer Awareness Month? You're going to march. You're going to have whatever it is you're going to have. No, let's let's look at cancer awareness totally every month. So that when Cancer Awareness Month comes in October next year, we can say, okay, last year we had so many people who died of cancer. This year we're reducing because we've taken these steps to cut back on what we do that causes cancer. You know, this is something I, I, I always remember when I used to live in Atlanta, Georgia. They, they have this, this march all the time, every year, you know. And I said it to my friend, I talked about this before, you know, Jose, I don't know if he's still alive, Jose Williams, I said to him, Jose, um, Every year, we have this, this marching going on every year. And I'm here for a few years, and I'm listening, and I'm looking at it. And it's the same thing we do every single year. When are we going to wake up out of this dream that we have? We're having this dream every year. When are we going to wake up and start doing something about, what, 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 about why are we marching? When are we going to wake up and do something about cancer awareness? When are we going to wake up and do something about the crimes, about the, about the, the, the abuse 
that, that occurs on, on, on not only on, on women, but on men too. Men are abused also. You know? We don't, we don't spank the children anymore because we say it's abuse. But you know what? When I was growing up, I was beaten, spanked totally for not doing my homework on time, not getting it done before I go to bed, for not reporting when I need to report, for not being home on time, for not, you know? I mean, I, 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 I paid the price. And you know what? Here I am today. And I can, I can safely say that the, whatever that was happening by, uh, at the hands of my parent in those days made me become what I am today. Me not saying that you're going to abuse anyone. But you know what they say, spare the rod and spoil the child. That's what's happening today. It's happening today. You don't have to abuse anyone, but they must know that, 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 these, are things that you, these are things that you do to make sure that you become what you want to become when the time comes for you, to become what you need to become. You see? So let's just don't talk about cancer awareness or breast cancer awareness month. Let's just don't talk about the crimes anymore. Let us get down to the root cause of the crimes and see why these criminals are committing the crime and then one commits suicide after you. So, you know, he kills someone, then he kills himself. Why? Why? No, he cannot be penalized for the life he took because he killed himself. We have too many vagrants on the streets, my friends. You know, and a, and a vagrant, or you don't know what is in the mind of that person. We need to get a home or some place and take these people and put them there and retrain them so they can become contributors to society and to themselves. Where is our focus? You know, I don't understand. Where are we focusing on? We are supposed to be taking care of each other. We are hurting each other instead of taking care of each other. That's what we are doing. And it's becoming more and more and more and more of that. Every time you turn the newspaper, every time you listen to the news, Every time you talk to someone, did you hear what happened yesterday? You know, I mean, it's becoming like an epidemic. Let us get to the root cause. Why is it happening? Why? We have psychotherapists in this country. You can sit and, and help you to analyze, you know, the, the way the, the, the person functions, why they think, how they do, what they do, why they do what they do, and all of that. But instead of us consulting these people, we overlook them because they're not part of the clique that you have. You know, sometimes I get so frustrated, I wonder, should I, should I get out of here or should I stay here and, you know, fight? But I love my country and I love my people. I'm a Guyanese by birth. I love Guyana. I've traveled the world and there's not many places that I can say are better than Guyana. We just need to get it right. Beautiful country, we just don't have it right. We got some wrong people doing some wrong things. Wrong people in the right places doing the wrong things. Too much of that is happening. Let us start caring for each other and let us start understanding what makes one do what they do and help them to correct it. We can't save the world and we can't save everyone. You know, doctors can't save everybody. You have to learn to save yourself. What is it that you're doing that is causing you to become who you are? The doctor doesn't make you sick. Doctors may make errors at times, but the doctor didn't get you sick in the first place. What is it that we're doing to ourselves to make us become who we are? Let's fix those things and then we'll be a good society. We'll be healthier. We'll be better. But now, what message are we sending to the people who are looking on out there? What message are we sending? You think they're going to want to come here? I don't know. We are a small society. We're not supposed to be having all this happening here. We got to get it right. We have to get it right. You know? So come on. Cancer Awareness Month? Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Yes. But let it be Cancer Awareness Month and Cancer Awareness Day and Cancer Awareness Week and Cancer Awareness all the time. All the time. Because cancer can strike at any time. Not only in October, it can strike at any time. So, today I want to talk about losing weight. But you know what? I can't believe it's so late. 
<laughs> I want to talk about losing weight, some secrets that you can apply to losing weight. So I'll give you some, right? I got 10 secrets to losing weight and I wanted to give them to you, but this, the time is almost gone. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Good evening. All right, we lost that one. Number one, make small weight loss goals. Some of you say, um, I'm going to lose 40 pounds this year, you know? And the year's almost ended and you lose one pound yet. Good evening. Good night, sir. Oh, my brother, good night. How are you doing? Fine, thank you, sir. Man. No, I'm coming by you, no fear. I'm coming <laughs> by you, I got to pass by you. All right. At the end of this discussion, I just want, if I'm going to get off here, I'm going to ask you something very important. Okay. Now, you ask what causes this problem. Hmm? Which one of the problems? All the problems. <laughs> I think I did the wrong thing. Hello there. 
I was trying to take it off the air, but I, I'm, I'm trying to take it off the air, but it's not happening. It, it, it didn't happen. I, I don't know what. It, I, um, I think I pressed something wrong. We call me tomorrow. You, you ask me the question. I'll answer it for you. All right? Sorry about that. Oh, my. That was a mouthful. Make small goals. In other words, don't say you want to lose 40 pounds now. This month, I'm going to lose two pounds. Right? Next month, I'm going to lose two more. You know? Do that. Realistic goals and work towards achieving those goals. Right? Secondly, they say count calories. But I don't want you to count calories. I want you to make choices that are wise, that will help you to lose the kind of weight that you want to lose. You want to lose two pounds in this, in this month? then you can't want to eat the same things or do the same things you're doing now and expect to get a different result. All right? You've got to do something different to achieve something different. Okay? Um, my operator, please put the number on the, on, the, on the screen. I don't think it's on the screen there. I don't see it. So that persons can maybe have access to call it. All right? So you want to make, you want to make adjustments to what you're eating and the amounts that you're eating so that you can, you can get those results that you want, all right? Make weight loss permanent, permanent. In other words, don't set a goal to lose weight now and then after now you gain the weight back, you know? If you, want, if you have to lose 40 pounds to maintain your body weight, then make it permanent. In other words, when you lose the weight, don't do what it takes to put it back on. Keep it off of you. All right? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Haynes. Good evening, sir. Um, I got a problem. I, I fell down about a week ago, right? I, w I was holding a chair and back in the back. And I fell and hit my hand on the, on the, the, the steps, right? And it, I just rubbed it, you know. I, I, I felt the blow, but I just rubbed it. And, but when I, when, I, when I walked off, I realized that it really swelled, you know, it, caught, it started coming out real big. So I got freaking and, and I got some ice and I put it on it. And I put the ice on it and then when I reach home, I apply some more ice. And at night I put, I put some more ice. But I stopped using the ice now. It's four days now I put the ice. And the swelling went down, but I'm still feeling the, bone, the, the, the pain on it, right? And I'm feeling like a, a little lump. I, I wanted to know if I could put... Uh, but two days now I put no ice, but I want to know if I could put, apply some warm water or something on it. Well, what you can do, you probably maybe damage something in there. Either you, you probably damage your bone, depending on how you, where you hit, how you hit, or you damage some tissues or ligaments. Yeah, and most became, likely I believe I damage some tissue, right? Because okay. What you want to do now, since mm -hmm. it's four days old, is apply some heat. Okay. You get a heat rub, maybe? Yeah. You rub it in the area. And if you have a heating pad, you put on the heating pad there and you, you plug it in and allow it to penetrate. And okay. You, and remove the inflammation. Apparently, there must be some inflammation there still. Yeah, because I see like some, like some um, marks on it, like some blood spot, like, mm -hmm. you know, on, yeah. uh, on the skin, right? Okay. So what do you, if you can get some heat, you know, some heat that you can bear, maybe for 20 minutes, you put it on there and allow it to just kind of move the inflammation. Yeah, and I could, after that, I could put like some... Um, so eat something on it? Well, you, you want to put the heat, you want to put the heat rub on it and then apply the heat. Okay. So it can penetrate. Okay. Thanks a lot, Doc. All right. You're welcome. Really enjoy your program. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that is something that can help. And I know about that because I just did that to myself. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening to you. And how are you? I'm okay. I'm trying. Very good, very good. Um, I just want to ask a question. I've got a fungus in my hair ever since, and no matter how much I watch it and so forth, it would come. It would come. It would keep coming more. You watch it. The cat turned down. Not the TV. You got it. Um, it keep watching and turning. It's coming out more. I don't know if you could assist me in what the is it, one. Is it flakes or is it um, on the scalp, what, on the hair? Only hair itself and sometimes it'll be on the scalp, on the forehead. On the forehead to work it. It sounds like it's what we call psoriasis. Pardon me? Something called psoriasis. Okay. Um, it's a fungus that is inside of you. It's not just on the outside. It is manifesting on the outside, but it's coming from inside. 
So we need to we need to penetrate inside of you. There's something called micros microsporum or micro um, <laughs> microsporum canis. Okay. Or microsporum gypsum. Those are all funguses that that you can pick up from maybe uh, instruments that are not clean or or even from parasites that get into your system. Okay, sir. So we, you need to you need you, we need to first identify what it is, and then apply the necessary or correct approach to help you to overcome that. Because, like you said, never mind how you wash it; it comes back. That's because it's not it's manifesting outside, but the problem is on the inside. Okay. What you can do also is cut back on your sugars and starches tremendously. Okay. All right. All right. Hold on. Someone wanna ask a question. That'll be quick. Hello, good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. Um, the thing is, right, I have two children that were born in Trinidad. Both of them had seizures from the age of um, a year old, right? They had seizures? Seizures, yeah. Okay. From the age of a year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I came back to Diana on permanent because I hadn't seen anybody to look at the other babies so I had to come back, right? So, I went to Georgetown Public Hospital because the baby had taken with it the other night and the big one, he was on the epilim syrup, so, um, so, um, sodium valproate, epilim syrup in Trinidad, but Diana have a different, they said they don't carry that brand that Trinidad have. I just wanted to know if the one that I got from Georgetown Hospital, if that were affect him in any way. Well, all drugs have side effects, okay? Um, what we're hoping is that what, what has been administered now is not going to hurt, but will help in controlling the seizures. But the thing that you want to find out is what is it that's causing the seizures? Why are these children both having seizures? That is what you need to find out. Well, we did go to um, on, on the phone. We did um. The dead CT scan, the, dead, the electronic scan, scan of the brain, and nothing, everything come out normal. All right, you, you're an adult and you sound pretty sensible. If everything comes out normal, yeah. and you're still having the seizures, everything can't be normal. It can't be. If it was normal, then everything should be okay. Yeah, exactly. It means that something's been missed. There is some missing element there that has been maybe not diagnosed or overlooked that needs to be tapped into to see what it is. Okay. There is a reason why the seizures are occurring. And until you get to that reason, it's going to happen. When you take the medication, it may control it. But we need to find out what it is that's causing the seizures. So you can give me any idea what I can do? Look at children. Well, there's not much. That, how old are the children? Um, the eldest is... Um, and the baby is a year and six months. They're very, they're very small. We and are, just the big one that have on the arm, um, the foot on the epilepsy because mm -hmm. he says he has a seizure disorder. It started with a febrile seizure for the big one. He had it four times. And then it, he had two without the fever, so they, they say he has a seizure disorder. Okay. Okay, we call it myocolonic my ep epilepsy or my colonic seizures. Um, f because they were so small, I couldn't use the diagnostic tool to find out because it's, you, you need them to be able to give us an attention.